Military weapons are advancing at an incredible rate. If you compare old World War weapons to what we have now, the technology involved is mind-blowing. But there is a new arena when it comes to military hardware, and that's robots that do the fighting for humans. Imagine a battlefield of fully autonomous robots fighting a massive battle and taking orders without human casualties. Well, okay, that might be pushing it. But check out these amazing military robots that will change the course of warfare. Doggo Named after the Argentinian Mastiff breed of dog, the Doggo is a compact powerhouse of muscle and force. It can traverse over any obstacle, including climbing flights of stairs. It is equipped with six wide-angle cameras, allowing the operator to see in a 360-degree view. Not only can it spot targets remotely, but it is also armed with a Glock pistol that harbors two additional cameras along the barrel. Of course, the gun itself is a Glock 26, a baby Glock that is slotted into the robot and has a magazine of 14 rounds. The operator uses a point-and-shoot interface using their fingers to aim the laser, resulting in a pinpoint accuracy with each shot. The Doggo can fire five rounds in two seconds, and because of its size, is not affected by the recoil. The robot also has some additional features that have been added for police use, such as microphones and speakers for remote negotiations, and a Picatinny rail that can be outfitted with non-lethal weapons such as pepper spray. GuardBot The GuardBot was originally designed with the idea of a planetary mission on Mars, allowing this robot to travel on any solid surface at 9 miles per hour, through sand and snow, and in water where it can travel upstream at a brisk 3 miles per hour. This is one of the more passive robots that the military has considered using mainly for surveillance and detection. The drive is powered by a motorized pendulum that changes the bot's center of gravity. The pendulum motion drive system can last up to 25 hours on one charge moving continuously, or up to 45 hours stationary. It's fitted with a variety of sensors, audio, and GPS that allows the unit to be controlled remotely or via satellite and can even be mapped to follow a specific set path. Each unit can be customized with different treads and sizes ranging from 5 inches to 7 feet in diameter. The GuardBot is still in development, so it remains to be seen if the device will be considered the future of mobile surveillance. Gladiator With a height of about 6 feet armed and weighed in at 1,600 pounds, the Gladiator is a compact, tactile, armored, unmanned, teleoperated ground vehicle that can easily be considered the most valuable multi-tool of the Marines. It has been developed to support troops conduct ship-to-object maneuvers to minimize risk and eliminate threats. Two different payloads are on board these particular units, a remote weapon station and a CART or Combat Armed Robotic Targeting Module. The robot can assist in cover fire while also being able to bring supply to soldiers at the line of fire or anywhere there is high amount of risk with critical and larger assets. The CART is a targeting designation system in which the unit can remotely assign targets for an aircraft or any type of laser-guided munitions. It can be fitted with a variety of weapons, such as an M134 minigun that can fire an impressive 3,000 rounds downrange in under a minute. Another popular choice for these units is Anti-Personnel Obstacle Breaching Systems, or APOBs, that allow safe breaching of complex obstacles such as landmines or the disposal of improvised explosive devices. The combinations of these all-around vehicles seem limitless and will most likely be used so long as there are live troops on the ground. Robot Stingrays We are not as far away from having robotic humans as we used to be, and we are even closer to robot stingrays. Yes, stingrays whose biomechanics are surprisingly easy to recreate. The robot Stingray is made from both titanium and aluminum skeleton with silicone fins and is a mobile swimming mine. The inner layer is made out of sound-absorbing materials that allow the metal from the mine to be hidden from sonar. It even has an ultrasonic self-protection system since its design is so lifelike that it is highly likely to be considered food for their natural predators. Although the mine isn't the fastest, capping at 6 miles per hour, it can keep up that speed for 12 hours. 
Sleep mode also allows the mind to remain dormant until it receives its order to strike. There have been several similar ideas from other countries for a maritime mine, including the U.S. Navy's MK-67 submarine-launched mobile mine, or SLMM, which is a torpedo-like weapon that can be used to travel to a remote location and post up on the bottom of the ocean floor while it waits for its target. However, it's the latest idea coming out of Turkey, named the Wataz, that adds this stinging twist. Naturally, details for the mine isn't readily available, but it has been in development for two years, which suggests that this project will eventually make its debut. MQ-1 Predator Developed by General Atomics, this infamous American-born robot certainly doesn't need an introduction. The MQ-1 Predator drone was one of the most highly used remotely piloted aircraft in the US, Turkish, Italian, and even Royal Moroccan Air Forces for over two decades. The drone was primarily used for aerial reconnaissance missions until 2002 when it became the primary remotely piloted aircraft for offensive operations by the United States Air Force and the CIA in Pakistan and Afghanistan. They were outfitted with AGM-114C Hellfire anti-tank missiles and later with AGM-114K Hellfire missiles which were capable of hitting targets in motion from an even greater altitude, which gave the drones the new MQ-1A designation. General Atomics completed manufacturing on the final RQ-1 ordered by Italy in October 2015 and was retired by the United States Air Force in March of 2018 in order to favor the heavier and more capable MQ-9 Reaper. Robo-Bees as technology is starting to become more compact, so is the mechanics of flight, all the way down to the level of insects. Developed at Harvard University, these robo-bees weigh in at about 80 milligrams with 1.1-inch wingspans, which is believed to be the smallest man-made wingspan to achieve flight. The wings can flap over 120 times per second and can be controlled remotely in real time. At the foundational level, this project was developed in consideration of artificial pollination, but can also have been considered for search and rescue and surveillance. The only challenges facing researchers, however, are independent power supply and decision-making functions, which are currently supplied to the robot via tether, which is integrated within the skeleton. If these obstacles are overcome, it is possible for these bees to utilize swarm intelligence which will be imperative for the idea of artificial pollination, as well as search and rescue missions, and can even be expanded for use in detecting harmful chemicals in the air. Although it is said that this project offers a few ecological and moral risks, this project is still in development and will likely see some sort of implementation in the coming years. The Crusher The Crusher bears a striking resemblance to the Gladiator mentioned earlier. Although the Crusher is specifically designed to work independently of its cavalry. Think of it like a mega soldier. It's outfitted with its own arsenal and is highly autonomous. It is equipped with five 2 megapixel cameras, which give it an overall field view of 200 degrees horizontally and 30 degrees vertically, at a resolution of over four times that of a television screen. It then uses this data along with GPS to map its own path to conquer obstacles. If it just so happens to run into something it didn't plan for, say a six-foot high brick wall, or a gorge that's over six feet deep, the Crusher is able to readjust to find the easiest and safest path to its objective. No human manipulation required. Just like a soldier, sometimes the Crusher has to move stealthily which is why it is equipped with a hybrid electric engine to reduce noise, but it is also able to continue to operate after the engine has been shut off. Also, like the Gladiator, the Crusher is considered for missions that are severely dangerous for human soldiers, anything from supply mule to sentry. This vehicle has all the trimmings of its counterparts, but has an artificial intelligence that is unrivaled. XM-1216 Small Unmanned Ground Vehicle Weighing less than 30 pounds, this robot is another man-packable robot that is also future combat systems. 
This particular vehicle, manipulated with a Microsoft Xbox 360 controller, is extremely useful in military operations where there are tight terrain and many small hiding spots such as urban terrain, sewers, tunnels, and caves. It can also aid in the performance of high-risk functions such as detecting toxic industrial chemicals and materials. Its use is highly considered in urban environments since these situations require a lot more visual intelligence and careful consideration before moving forward, either for priority positions or potential strikes. The XM216 has both passive and offensive capabilities, and because its modular design allows multiple payloads to be integrated in a sort of plug-and-play fashion, it can even carry up to 6 pounds of payload weight if necessary. In 2015, orders were finally placed by the U.S. Marine Corps to utilize the XM216 and has since better adapted the armed forces to urban combat. PD-100 Black Hornet Forget physical eligibility limitations. This PD-100 Black Hornet has been drafted for use in major military forces of 19 NATO allied countries, such as the US, France, Germany, the UK, Australia, Netherlands, India, and Norway. This micro unmanned aerial vehicle was developed by Prox Dynamics and is four inches in length and has a five inch rotor span. The Black Hornet is small enough to fit in your hand and weighs the same as one AA battery. Three cameras, one facing forward, one looking straight down, and one pointing downward at 45 degrees, provides troop with full motion video and still images for local situational awareness, and can be taught to operate in as little as 20 minutes. In 2014, Prox introduced a new version of the PD-100 that had night vision capabilities and fitted with both long-wave infrared and day video sensors that can transmit the data over a mile in range. Although the Hornet has a speed of 10 meters a second and only 25 minutes of endurance, it is still a highly considered and regarded surveillance tool used to this day to provide troops with information of what's ahead and what's to come. Safer Humanoids have a contender amongst the ranks of the artificially intelligent. Say hello to SAFER, the shipboard autonomous firefighting robot. SAFER is a humanoid robot designed to help mitigate damage for sailors on board naval vessels. The robot can navigate the interior of a vessel independently as well as climb ladders and respond to various emergencies. The robot utilizes a mass number of sensors that have direction, heat awareness, and obstacle detectors. Due to limited information released from the U.S. Navy, it is hard to identify all of the intricate mechanisms that make safer work. The movement of the robot relies on the sensors installed and must be sophisticated enough for the robots to be able to maneuver safely and effectively through dense, smoky, and tight quarters of naval vessels. Safer also possesses a hose trigger system that allows it to aim at and put out fires. The robot must also be equipped with some sort of fireproof insulation to be able to withstand extreme temperatures, as well as the effects of electrical and chemical fires which can occur at any point in time. Considered a success, this humanoid type of robotics can also be applied to other uses. Some of those uses considered are battlefield extraction, where the robot can retrieve injured personnel when a fight is occurring, or in surgery that is considered too delicate for any person. The Office of Naval Research has been utilizing technology of this kind for an extremely long time. However, this project seems to be one of the biggest projects they have ever done. We hope you enjoyed the video. Which one of these was your favorite? If we missed one, let us know in the comments. And if you liked the video, click the subscribe button and turn on notifications, and you will be the first to know when a new video comes out. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.